but it does what it needs to do and that's all I'm gonna say. Mm, something's different, but I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> hey loves, it's A back on your screen. Well, hold up. <clears throat> I haven't done this in a long time. My lip gloss has to be popping. It's popping. What's popping? This is a new tube of lip gloss, and yet still, there's still a weird part there. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today we're talking working while legally blind and the tech I use. I've done similar videos to this on my channel, so you can check them out on the Struggling with Stargards playlist. And if you want something more in depth, I have the series both here on page. Patreon and YouTube related to sites. So you can check it out there too. Anywho, in this one, we're gonna get into some things. Let's, you know, start from the bottom up. Let's do a little backwards today. As you can see, the elephant in the room behind me, I promise if I ever do a video that's not related to Star Guards, I will take the time to take that down. So it's more aesthetic over here, but I figured I'd just leave it up today because we're talking about it today. So as you can see, this is my work setup and I'm very pleased with it. I know you guys are probably like, what's so special about it? Or you're probably like, whoa, that's a big screen. But let me get into some things. We're gonna go from the bottom up, like I said. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the keyboard. This is a large font keyboard. And in full transparency, I saw this 12 years ago when I was first diagnosed. I went up to the CNIB, which is a Canadian National Institute for the Blind, with my friend who wasn't legally blind. She was just there to support me. And I remember she was so upset with me when we left. She's like, why are you acting like that? They had pens with lights in it. They had a magnifying mirror that was attached to a lanyard. I'm like, seriously? You guys pulled together a whole convention for this? For this? I was so disappointed. In 2010, I'm like, this is what you have? Not that much has changed in 12 years. When the accessibility consultant I got paired with suggested this, I was like, you know what? Just throw it in the bag, it's giving. <laughs> Do you remember that Neo and Fabulous song? Just throw it in the bag. I haven't done this in a while. I'm a little rusty. This is my first video of 2023 and we're in month three, so bear with me. But when I first received this, I was like, whoa, larger font. And then I realized I still can't see the keys, but it's already here and let me try it. When you are going through a degenerative eye disease, which means things worsen over time, what might work for you today may not work for you in 10 years and vice versa. So for me back in the day, I'm like, what is this? This is really what you're giving people? That's disgraceful. Today, I can't say I'm that far off from that sentiment, but I see it differently. And that's why I always talk about perspective on Patreon. This keyboard helps me not because it's large text, but because it's larger. It has the keypad that's at the side, which is the same layout as this power laptop that I have, which makes it easier for me to not make a mistake why does that sound like wrong English? It makes it less likely for me to make a mistake. Ding, that's how it goes. The keys are essentially bigger themselves. It is easier for me to type. I find when I use the 13 inch, which is the one I pack when I go into the office, I make a few more typos than I used to. Keyboards do make a difference in general. I find I type best on my iMac keyboard because it's more flush and the deeper the key and the more you have to press down, cause you know those old school ones where it's like <laughs> Those ones, forget about it, especially with these nails, sometimes they get trapped in between. Speaking of, I think I'm gonna take them off. So that is a perfect example of how something may not seem useful for you, but because of the functionality of it, you can find use for it. And I wanted to say that off the top, because if you're anything like how I was and technically still am, I expect tech to be light years ahead of where it is, especially when you see what tech is for other industries. Like when we look at tech for consumers that are into VR, for example, the things that you can do in the VR world, like apply that to Legally Blind and we'd be good. Limgarium Laviosa. I'm pretty sure Harmione didn't say that. Whatever she said, this thing that came with that keyboard is everything. I don't use it with a keyboard. Truth be told, I plug this in the back of my iMac and I light up my iMac keyboard on the nights when I'm editing YouTube videos when I should be sleeping. I don't really look when I type. I had a very treacherous teacher in grade, was it eight or nine? who used to cuss us off, especially me. She would literally stand behind me and say, stop looking down. Miss, how am I supposed to learn how to type if I'm not looking down first? I don't wanna go back to that time in my life. But that is why I don't really look at the keyboard. And you know what, I should thank her in hindsight because I can't see the keyboard anymore. But if I ever wanna make sure that my pinky's going where it needs to go, because you know some of them keyboard shortcuts have you stretching and contorting, 
This helps me see where my pinky is going and hopefully press the right keyboard shortcut. So you might not have to buy the whole keyboard to get this. I'm sure they sell something like this on AliExpress. Back to the setup, moving from the bottom up, the laptop. So initially they gave me what they call is a standard laptop. So it's a very lightweight Dell laptop. This is not a Dell sponsorship. Truth be told, if I wasn't an Apple head, if I wasn't a Mac girl, I would probably be Lenovo, like Dell and Acer. But it does what it needs to do. And that's all I'm gonna say. But they ordered me a power laptop because of what's inside. They installed Zoom text a couple weeks ago, maybe even a month ago now. Let's get into what Zoom Text is before I get into how I feel about it. Zoom Text is an application or software, whichever, that you put onto your computer that allows you to magnify what you're using. Think of it like, I don't know. I don't even know what to think of it as. Just know that this software is supposed to help make life more seamless, especially when you're working, but it does quite the opposite. The keyboard shortcut is nonsense. It's like caps, locks, enter, and then the up and down key. And then there's all these other keyboard shortcuts to help you either reverse the contract or turn on dictation or have that really weird red box to highlight what you're looking at that you can't even see, so it's beyond me. You can make the cursor larger or change the color. It has a lot of functionality that I personally don't use or need. Speaking on personally, let me just segue right here before we get into Zoom text, because <laughs> I got a lot to say. Anything I say, if it doesn't sit with your soul, take it with a grain of salt. Something may not work for me that works wonderfully for you. If you like it, I love it. And vice versa. There are things that people have sworn by. I cannot tell you how many people at Starguards tell me they love a black background with white text. Unless it's an app that I can't change to the basic black on white. I, I don't like that. I only have it on one thing, Microsoft Teams. The text is larger in white than it is in black. I don't know why it's like that, but when I did it, I was like, ooh, I can actually see better. That's an example to share with you that some people like reverse contrast or blue on yellow or yellow on blue or sapia or brightness or dimness, but you have to figure out for you. And while we're here, I wanna say that the biggest thing besides tech and tools is giving yourself the time to get to know where you're at. Especially if you have a degenerative disease, what might've worked for you 10 years ago might not be the case today. And you have to sit with that. I've made the mistake, I continue to make the mistake to try to do things that I used to do knowing I have no business. I have no business doing these things or I need to adapt at the very least. And sitting with yourself and being honest with yourself will help you not only so that you can tell people how they can help you or if you have an accessibility consultant, they can know better how to help you. But so you can pay it forward. I can't tell you how many times someone in my real life, whether work or personal, going out socially, oh, I learned so much about being legally blind for you. And in that way, I feel like I have a responsibility to be as versed as I can about my experience. I can't just be wandering willy nilly like, oh, I think this works. Oh, I never tried that. Well, I never came back to that. That's why I gave Zoom text a good, honest try. But when it started crashing my software and I was missing meetings, I said, Nana, throw the whole software away. Trifling, okay? I hate this software. I hate the software more than the magnifier that comes with Windows, which I hate a lot and that's saying a lot. And I remember my consultant, I have three of them. One of them was saying, you know, yeah, I've heard a lot of blind people say they don't like it. So then why do you still have a contract with this company? And this is the problem with the world. Let me not go on my soapbox. But a lot of times, especially when it comes to tech, things don't advance if there's no reason. And the reason usually is funding. So if a company has a contract, there's no incentive for them to do better or find better or make something better. And you know what, we're just gonna stop it there because I don't wanna make this a whole nother video. Just know that Zoom Text is a hard pass for me. Return to sender, it's still on there because a the company paid and hey, but it's turned all the way off. When I did have it on, I would use it to zoom in and pan the same way I would with magnifier. I didn't really use any of the functions, although I tried. It was very distracting. It crashed my programs and it took me a longer time to open certain applications like Outlook or Teams or Excel. The reason why I have Zoom Text or I turn on magnifier is so that I can be faster, make up for the time that I lose, because that's another thing I have to share with you guys. 
especially if you're visually impaired, tell me if you can relate. You take longer times to do things that maybe a couple years ago, lickety split. And other people can't understand that. They don't know, but I know myself well enough to know that I can't do things as quickly as I could before not only because I have to zoom from Narnia to back because everything's so zoomed in like that, but I need to take the time to double check and triple check or take longer to type. So giving yourself the grace and patience to know that things are gonna take a little longer. So when you have tech, you wanna save time to make up for that lost time. Zoom text is just backwards to me. So moving up from Zoom text, magnifier, which is embedded in every Windows product, and it has not changed, upgraded, nothing since I first turned it on however many years ago, and that is a no-no. I feel like when it comes to anything tech-related, there should always be advancements. Always. And when it comes to magnify, it's the same old foolishness. It works, but when the bar is in hell, how high are you really going, you know? I think I'm a little spoiled because I compare it to my iMac which I have a trackpad and I pinch and zoom so easily. Everything is seamless for me, even the keyboard shortcut to zoom in and out. If I didn't have that, there'd be no Alicia B. There would be no channel, trust me. But because of that, it's been able to bridge the gap of what I've been struggling with for the last 12 years. Apple's not much better than Windows. The only thing is they found a way to do it better and they stuck with it. Here we have two different operating systems. And I wish that they got on their Instagram type of time. Cause you know, Instagram stole from Snapchat and TikTok. Windows steal from Apple. And then maybe Apple will improve because now they have something to compare to. But right now, the Mac magnifier, whether it's on the iPhone, the iPad, or the iMac, or MacBooks, way better. And they haven't changed much since I first started using them either. So there's that. The big elephant in the room, the screen. And I mean, it's 32 inch, so it's bigger than the 27 that I got a couple years ago. And I don't even know where to begin with this. I remember when I first disclosed that I was visually impaired, they offered me a 55 and I was like, whoa, 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 we're doing too much. We're doing too much with that. Where am I gonna fit that? You know I live in a small space, right? They don't know that, but hey. 32 is like the Goldilocks. It's good for right now. I'm sure it'll be good for a couple of years and we'll see from there. I like that they were willing to take it to the next step and just go big or go home. Cause you know, with every size comes a different price increment, but the company I work for clearly doesn't care about the coins in that way, or they care, but they realize that investing in their employees is worth it. There's a statistic, can I say the word? <laughs> There's a statistic, there we go. And of course now I forgot the numbers, but just know that it's proven that visually impaired people tend to stay at jobs way longer because one, they're grateful to have a job. The percentage is that 10% of visually impaired people are employed. Let that sink in. Two, we ain't got nowhere to go. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> really that's really rough because we're grateful to have the job and because we know that it's slim pickings out there as far as accommodations and acceptance we tend to stay places longer than someone who can see and say sayonara if you know what i'm saying so with those two things in mind it only makes sense to invest in someone who's willing to work has something to prove because you know i always got something to prove not to other people but to myself all the pressure applied 95 percent of the time not all the time is me on me. I'm bringing that all in to say that it means a lot that this company with the swiftness got me a screen that is much easier to see than a laptop. And they've ordered one just like the keyboard to each of the respective locations. One is in limbo, still hasn't arrived yet, but if you keep up with the vlogs, hopefully next week it'll be there. It just goes back to that quote that I said, just remember that Sometime in the past, some yesterday, you prayed for, desired, and wished for something that you have for today. And it really grounds you in that. Sometimes I wake up and I look, screen's there, and I'm like, dang, it's an eyesore. But then I think, this eyesore shows me where I've come from where I've been and where I can go. And that's what it signifies to me. I don't mean to make it so deep, but that's how I feel about it. So anyway, on that note, I'm gonna wrap up this video because I have a lot more to say. We could talk about the keyboard shortcuts Dominic gave me or the 20-20-20 rule, which is to stare at the screen for 20 minutes, stare in the distance, 20 feet away for 20 seconds so that you don't make your vision worse. So much more I can say. So if you want a part two, let your girl know down below as well as any other 
suggestions for future videos. If you haven't already subscribed for more, hit the like to let the algorithm know that you want this video to grow. Like I said, support on Patreon. I have a site series there as well as on here. And I do podcasts once a week on authenticity. So that is that on that. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.